Okay, let's get on with the lectures. Uh, this lecture we're going to be talking about how we can set up some initial basic rigs for our uh, three objects we're going to be animating in a second. And we're going to go ahead and maybe uh, animate a brick falling. I think I can fit that all in one little video. Might keep it too long. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a brick. That's the what we're going to anim animate first. So I'm just going to go in, get a cube, and just make a simple little brick. No big deal. Alright, that looks like a good brick to me. Shouldn't be too bad. Let me adjust my computer a little bit. I get a better. There we go. Um, so we have this brick here. And what we need to do, we need to set up a simple little rig for it so we can animate this even better. So I'm going to go ahead and do a few things and follow closely step by step. Rigging is not a simple uh, endeavor by any means, but uh, hopefully I can shed some light on the subject. So with this brick here, I need to make sure all my values here are set to zero in my channel box. We can find the channel box in this top right button right here. Just click it and it brings up my channel box with all my transformation values, you know, translates, rotates, scales. It also has my layer, edi uh, layer editor right here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure all these values are zero. We can do that simply by going to modify and resetting transformations. What you'll see is the brick going exactly to the center of the grid and everything zeroing out. So that's perfect right now. I'm going to bring up my outliner real quick. The outliner is going to be your best friend when you're making these little rigs for your uh, characters, objects, whatever. Let's call this brick mesh 01. And what we're going to do is we're going to create like a hierarchy of different controls we can use to get this brick animating. Uh, we're not going to animate directly on the brick. We're going to create some handles here that we can really go in and start animating the brick with a lot of control. And we do this by creating curves. So I'm going to go to create nerves primitives and I want to create let's see let's create a square. Okay. Let's see if this works. I might have to go in and make it a uh, circle. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a tool to get it moving in the correct, uh, just to make a tool to make translations easier for us. All right. I was afraid of this. What we have now is a bunch of lines that have come together. Let's see if we can't combine them somehow. Nope. All right, let's delete that. I don't want to have to select a bunch of lines. So that's a lesson in maybe making squares not being the best thing for handles. I just want to create one curve. I don't have to worry about selecting different curves within. So that brick, that square wasn't the best. Let's just make a few circles. All right, so I'm going to make a circle here. And I'm going to create it just around the base of my brick. Okay? And I'm going to call this curve translate. Uh, and let's call this like translate handle 001. So, how can we use this curve to move around my brick? Well, it's this pretty simple uh, little trick. What we're going to do is we're going to create a hierarchy within our uh, outliner right here. But I'm not going to move anything around yet. Let's go ahead and start making all the rest of my curves. So I'm going to go in here again, and we're just going to make three circles here. Uh, let's make a uh, another circle, uh, but this time, let's make it in the vertical direction. And this will be our rotate handle. Rotate handle 001. All right. So now we have two circles here. I'm going to make the translate one a little bit bigger, and you know what? I'm going to kind of squish it down just to tell a difference between these two right here. I don't want to be confused about which one's my translate and which one's my rotate. And I want to make yet again another little curve. So let's make another circle right here within our create NURBS primitives, if I can actually select it. And this time I'm going to make it going in this direction facing us. And I'm going to make it really small. And this is going to be ultimately, let's make it kind of oblong. This is going to be my scale handle. 
All right, so we have all these curves in a brick. What the heck? Why? Well, I'll show us in a second, but we need to do a few things here to get this set up even more. Um, I'm going to show us a little trick that's good for rigging. So if I look in my channel box again, remember this little button up here brings it up. Remember, I don't want to animate any keyframes on my brick. And I can set up a failsafe to make sure that I don't do that before I even start animating. What I'm going to do is I'm going to left click on translate and drag it all the way down to scale in my channel editor right here. So with all nine values selected, I'm now going to right click on them and go to lock selected. Now, I can't even move it. See how the handlebars are grayed out? I can't move it, scale it, or rotate it. But I can still make a keyframe on it. But with these little values set up right here, it'll ensure that if we try to select the brick to uh, animate, it just won't work because we can't move it. So why would we keyframe that? So I'm just going to delete that keyframe on frame one I made. So if we can't move the brick, how are we going to get this thing to move? Well, like I said, we're going to create a hierarchy. And nesting these different curves within one another is going to be the key to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to middle mouse click and drag over our scale handle. So now in the scale, if I select my scale circle right here, I also have the brick selected. Look what happens when I scale these together. See the brick scales with me. I don't have to worry about uh, you know animating or scaling the brick directly. Okay, so just to make sure that my scale handle is set up correctly, I'm going to go ahead and freeze these channels right here as well. So I'm freezing transformations is really good. All right, so as you can see, after I did that, my circle now is it the regular shape so let's fix that before I can really freeze that transformation I'm showing you the mistakes you make so you don't have to do them again before we nest anything in our outliner let's make sure that all our curves have their transformations uh, frozen so freezing transformations ensures that the shape of this curve and the position of this curve will remain the same while zeroing out our transformation channel right here so if you look freeze transformations my scale curve remains oblong egg shaped while all my values are reset to their initial positions so let's do the same for my rotate handle alright this is how I'm gonna rotate the brick so let's freeze these transformations so the circle stays the same nothing's good everything's good everything's zeroed out and we'll freeze these transformations for the translate as well so now we've effectively got ourselves set up a nice rig now we just need to put it into action. All right, before I do that too, I'm going to go in and select this brick and make a layer for it because I don't want to be able to select this brick. So with our channel box open, I'm going to have this brick selected and I'm going to go to layers. I'm left clicking, I'm holding, and I'm selecting create layer from selected. So what this ultimately will do for us, and I'm going to name it brick lay. What this will do is allow us to lock out our brick See, when this little square says R, that means it's locked, and I can't select it. I can only select my little curves here. So we're getting really close to setting up our rig. So what I'm going to do now, I showed you earlier, I'm going to middle mouse click and drag this brick. See how the little cursor turns to a plus sign? And I'm just going to hover over the scale handle and just nest it. See, now I have this little uh, minus and plus box. I can see what's underneath it. It's like a uh, folder system. Like, in, like on your computer. So to ensure that I can only animate the scale of my curve, let's select translates and rotates in our channel box. So I left click and drag these blue bars down on them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click again and lock these as well. So the only thing I can do for this scale uh, curve is scale it. So I press the move button. My arrows are locked out hit the rotate button and my rotation handles are locked out but yet if I select the curve and go to scale I can still scale my brick it scales the curve too but that's okay um, in a real animation these curves won't be rendered so it won't really matter what these curves look like so what we're gonna do now is we're going to nest the scale handle so minimize our little uh, hierarchy right here we're gonna nest scale into rotate so now, when I select my rotate handle, well, that's my translation. When I select my rotate, I didn't exactly put it on there. 
There we go. You got to make sure you get it good. So now I have my brick inside my scale and my scale inside my rotate. When I select my rotate, it rotates everything, even the curve uh, scale handle right there. And same thing here. I'm going to lock out my channels I don't need. So I'm going to lock out translate. I'm going to select scale and lock these selected out as well. So now all I can do for my rotate handle is rotate it. One more step to go, and if you're keeping up, I guess I bet you can guess what it is. We're going to nest our rotate handle under our translate handle. And yes, once again, we're going to go in here and select rotates and scale values and lock those as well. So now, whenever I have my brick, I can select my translate curve, this long one right here, to move it. All right. I can select my rotate handle to rotate the brick and I can select my scale let me get a good selection on that I can select my scale curve just to scale it and we're actually going to be animating these curves okay we're not going to be animating the brick itself we don't need to because anywhere this brick these curves move to the brick's going to follow right with them so that's pretty smart um, I'm going to go ahead and save this file out I'm going to save it just on my desktop right here. Now's a good time to save. Um, be sure that you save it in Maya ASCII and make sure that you uh, give it a good file name like Brick Animate 001. I made it 001 to save iteratively so I can come back to maybe 003 if things are messing up down the road and I don't have to worry about losing any work. So now we have this brick it's all good we're all set up now I need to make a ground so I know what the bricks bouncing off of alright so let's make a, poly, a polygon primitive plane let's go to my top view I press spacebar to go to my top view I press spacebar I'm in my top view now let's make it a pretty big ground and that should do it right there I'm gonna reset these values to not O on the keyboard but O on the number pad and I'm gonna create a layer for it as well and I'm gonna call this ground lay. So now I know I have some geometry that my brick can bounce on. Alright, so the only things I can select now are my curves. Alright, and I think we're pretty good here. Um, tell you what, this will make this video just about setting up the rig, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hide this brick and we're going to do the whole process again. I'm just hide it. We're going to do the whole process again now with a ball, okay? Just to go over it one more time. I'm going to go ahead and rig all three objects together. Okay, great. So I'm going to go to Polygon Primitives. I'm going to grab a nice sphere. That looks pretty good. I'm going to make my little bouncy ball. All right, so here's my ball. <coughs> pretty good looking ball. I like it a lot. So the first thing I'm going to do, step one, after making your mesh, well step one is to name it ball mesh 001 and we'll call this ground mesh 001 okay great and you know what it's gonna be hard to tell the difference between translate handle for the ball and translate handle for the brick in my outliner so I'm gonna go ahead and make another little layer to contain my whole rig and brick together so I'm gonna go to modify I'm going to select my trans translate handle. Let's go ahead and show it back. So, so show selection. I'm going to go to modify or is it edit and group it. All right, that makes a whole new group for us. Okay, if we can see on my outliner, I have the group icon, three curves, and a brick. We can just call this brick uh, rig 001. So, with my brick rig 001. I now can tell the difference between my brick and my outliner and vice versa. And I'm going to go back to this lay brick layer and just call this object lay. That way I can make a whole new la layer for just my brick rig altogether so I can just get it out of the way when I need to. So let's select my brick rig now and let's just make a layer for it. Create a layer from selected and let's call this brick this is going to be the real brick lay because now I can hide the whole brick layer 
and I don't have to worry about locking out my curves I can just lock out all the objects I want to so my brick layer set up everything's good I got my ball mesh ready to rock and roll let's continue so with my ball named let's get into the second rig just to reinforce the idea and I'll probably make the feather one too do that really quick three times a charm right so let's freeze transformations remember freezing transformations um, will keep the ball in place while zeroing out all my transformations right here alright so I'm gonna go ahead and add that ball to my object layer so now I can't select the ball and you know what I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up above the grid right here maybe get it right on the ground so I'm gonna go to a side view here and there's my ball I messed with the channel box again so my translate Y has a new value that's just a simple matter of freezing the transformations again actually I reset them so resetting transformations is not the same as freezing transformations resetting these transformations is like me going over to translate Y and pressing zero and it basically says okay ball move back down to the zero point on this grid that's not what I want I want to keep my ball in the same position so if I freeze transformations remember it keeps your object in the same place and size but it still zeroes out your transformations right here alright so I got my ball set up good I'm ready to roll so let's do the same thing here let's create some curves so I go to NURBS I create a circle let's uh, create a circle looking down for my translate alright I can go back in and tweak it I'm gonna set these at zero just to make sure I'm centered around the ball and I'm gonna put it around the midpoint of the ball so you can eye it and I'm gonna scrunch it down say okay this is my translate handle because this the oval looks like it's almost like a uh, I'm gonna look at it like an arrow saying go this way because it's skinny and it's pointing in a certain direction okay it's not entirely encompassing the ball all the way. I want to make sure my handles are set up really nicely. All right, so there we go. So with my NURB circle selected, I, let's call this translate, translate, uh, handle, uh oh one, zero zero, yeah, uh oh one. We're going to freeze transformations, so everything's zeroed out nicely, um, and. I'm just going to take a shortcut here. I'm just going to duplicate this curve again. Uh, maybe spin it 90 degrees that way. Spin it 90 degrees this way. Because I believe that's kind of how our first yeah rotation handle was set up on our brick. Oops. Maybe I can get my brick layer hidden. And I want to make sure that my rotate curve is pretty circular because I want my rotate curve to be circular so that's my rotate handle right there I need to name it as such so let's go back to translate go back to our outliner and call this rotate handle if I can spell today uh -oh one. we're going to freeze transformations because we've done a lot of tweaking to this curve so go to modify freeze transformations and let's make my scale handle real quick Scale handle is going to be a little bit more tricky because I'm not going to be able to really differentiate it between the other curves, but we'll do the best I can. Because, you know, the ball is round. If I just make it a round ball, then meh. Alright. So we'll just have like the little scale handles peeking up right on the top of our ball here. That'll be a good tell. I'm actually going to make my rotate handle a little bit bigger so I can select that scale when I need it. So with my uh, rotate handle tweaked again, let's freeze those transformations. Let's freeze our new scale handles for transformations. I'm going to freeze them right now. And now we can start doing that whole hierarchy thing. So remember, put your object that you want to animate into scale. Okay. And it's very important that you do it in the same hierarchy as I am. Um, you want scale to be the last thing that you animate closest to the ball. Uh, there's a reason for this. So I'm going to nest scale into rotate and rotate into translate. So now I have a nice little curve or a rig set up right here. And I'm going to select my translate handle, my very 
top of my tier here and I'm gonna go ahead and go to edit and group it all together and call this ball rig 001 and let's give my ball rig 001 its own layer so there's layer one let's call this ball lay now I can hide my ball layer it's supposed to be hidden there we go I just had to add it to that layer alright so let's make a uh, feather or a leaf depending on what you want to do you can do a leaf or a feather and this isn't a modeling class so I'm not going to spend too much time modeling out something let's just take a cube and let's model out a basic basic feather so kinda have it long flat though uh, make it a little bit bigger so we can see it easier I'm gonna hover it right above the ground a little bit um, yeah make it flat and let's add some edge loops in here to get the shape of a leaf so I'm gonna go back to polygons menu insert edge loop let's make one right there let's make one right here right here let's see if we can get a, a leaf shape out of this so this is going to be the base so let's make this kind of roundish not too round though I'm going to pull out this vert right here to be the tip of my feather if I can select these handles let's bring them in wow that's a pretty good feather if you ask me alright so there's my awesome feather okay cool I'm just gonna go with it you know that looks almost like a leaf too whatever it's a light floating object whatever you want to call it alright so with my feather made let's call it just a feather mesh uh -oh, one I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty particular about naming stuff it keeps your Maya scenes working nice and easy. Alright, so with my object made, I'm going to go through this a little bit faster. We freeze transformations once more. Alright. I'm going to make a curve. So let's do circle. Let's do that. I, remember, I like to have my translate handles looking kind of like a, uh, I don't know, really little, really narrow. Let's make it a little bit longer. So there's my translate curve. I'm going to position it right in the middle of that feather. All right. I'm going to duplicate it. Spin it up. 90 degrees on that. Spin it around. 90 degrees on that. I'm just going to double check and make sure that my... Oh, no. Nope, it was the other one. I think I had it going this way, right? so 180 have it going down like that and this is my rotate so I'm gonna make this a circle again and I'm really gonna scale this guy up right there maybe scale this out I wanna set up my handles so I can select them as easily as possible I wanna have to be clicking all around clicking the wrong curves um, it'll make life a pain and let's duplicate this once more let's get my nice uh, curve for my scale and we'll make it like we have been kind of narrow like peeking in in the middle right here that way I'll know that's my scale so what we need to do now is we need to go and name them and freeze transformations so here's my first NURB circle freeze transformations translate handle 001 select my rotate curve I'll freeze those transformations we'll call this Ro ro rotate handle uh, one select my last curve for scale we'll freeze these transformations and we'll call this scale handle uh, one alright so let's do what we do best and nest these uh, objects in our outliner I middle click the feather I drop it in scale I click scale drop it in rotate rotate into translate I select my whole rig translate handle right here I select my translate handle and group it and we'll call this feather rig 01 
I'm just going to select my feather here, put it into my object layer so I can't select my feather. All right. And I've made, I realized I just forgot how to, forgot a few steps on my ball, but we'll do them here on my feather and I'll go back out when the video is done and fix my ball. I'm going to lock out some of these channel layers, right? Some of these channel values. So for scale, I'm going to lock out everything but scale. For rotate, I'm going to lock out my translates. I'm going to lock out my scales. And for my translate, I'll lock out everything but translate. So now I can only move my translate curve. That's just a really good way to make sure that you're not accidentally uh, animating translations on your rotation handle. It's just a good way to make sure you don't get confused. All right, so that wraps it up for our uh, rigging uh, layer. I'm going to rigging lecture. I'm going to go ahead and make a layer for my feather. And I've got a great scene set up now for our upcoming project. And if you set it up like this, there's uh, a good chance that you won't get confused by anything. You'll just have your layer set up. Okay, I'm animating my feather, so I'm going to make my feather visible. I've got my rig set up. I have them locked where they need to be locked. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lock out my whole feather. Don't forget to do that because I don't want to be able to move my feather at all, right? <coughs> and I'm ready to go and start animating, and it is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to have three separate le lectures, each for the brick, ball, and feather. This has been the lecture on rigging, doing basic rigs. I mean, this is a very, very basic rig, but it's a great place to start. All right, so that does it for this lecture. Check back, and I'll uh, teach you how to animate these guys. Thanks.